Euzu billahi mineşşeytanirracim. Bismillahirrahmanirrahim. Ati Allah, ati Rasul, ulul amri minkum and always a reminder for myself and abdukul ajis and da'if wa miskin wa zalim wa jahal. But for the grace of Allah that we're still in existence and we took a path in which to be nothing and alhamdulillah in this holy month of Shawwal in which is a binary code, is a reality of particle and waves and that in times of difficulty is a immense gift to understand the life that we live and the energy reality and that the respect for all humanity and all creations and all of God's creatures and to love and respect all creation that spiritual and the people of the world of light, their love is for the world of light and the love for God's creation and they are the caretakers of this creation. Regardless of the denomination, the practices, the belief of what the people have and what we'll call is the particle people, the people who live their life based on their form. And they find their significance based on their form and the people of the world of light that God guides to that reality comes and teaches these teachings on earth that when we rise above this particle understanding, physical understanding where we find ourselves to be important and the physical world its nature is to separate us. And the world of light comes and teaches that whatever discipline you want to apply, whatever thing you think is working, what is respected is the frequency of light. So when they ask the shaykh, do you like these people, this people, this people, we respect and love all of God's creation from His smallest creatures to His biggest creatures. The honour of mankind is determined by the light in which they omit, the practices in which they practice to bring about their light. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. This is Shaykh Nurjan. Thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah, if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream. Every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. The good deeds and good actions, good intentions bring about a goodness, a goodness in their light. That light is respected by the people of the heavens and their job is to increase the frequency of light for creation. Regardless, that's why these frequencies and these teachings, you know even government agencies and, and uh, mukhabarat and whoever wants to listen is 3000 videos for the last 20 years online. Nothing hidden from the shaykh's teachings. So they're open like a book, come listen to their teaching. You see exactly how they've been teaching for 20 years. 3000 videos, 3000 videos telling you it's about the light. It's about the love and the good character and the frequency in which you emanate. You say you love this and you love him and you love that, eh, more power to you if it's actually giving you power. And if your practices exhibit good character, so 
This is not biased to anything, even from within our own community. You see the shaykhs are teaching their own students that by virtue of labeling yourself something doesn't mean you've achieved something. Everything is based on faith in action. If all your prayers and all your zikrs, your chantings, your recitations, your mantras, whatever people want to call their practices, don't bring about a change within our light and within our frequencies, something is wrong. Even you're following a shaykh and you're not changing, something's wrong. There's something you're not saying that you're doing that is allowing negativity. The sins of men open themselves for attack. You can do all the things you think are good but without a shield of protection the sins that people do open a portal for the negative energies to attack. If the negative energies are attacking and the person thinks they're doing good deeds, what happens in the end when you're depositing and somebody is debiting at the same time? You're bankrupt. So, shaykh I deposit every day hundred dollars but you didn't come back and tell the shaykh, oh actually every day somebody taking out hundred dollars. Means that the actions we do when we disregard sin and we disregard negative actions, we disregard these negative characters and we're not really meditating every night, we're not really asking, did I do anything wrong? Has anything been taken from my account? I thought I had a wonderful day. I thought everything was going fantastic but without an accounting doesn't matter who you believe in. If you believe and you see Zeus all day long it doesn't really matter because these are just the, the khatir and thoughts but if in the end your account is negative what's the value? So all of these spiritual realities and teachings were meant to be used and when we use them we should look at our accounting every night and say that, I did these good things and I truly think they were good. I, I, I judge them in goodness based on self, selflessness, not selfishness. I was selfless in the act, I tried to help others without recognition. I tried to do good deeds and good actions from what God has given to me, the Almighty has given to me. And then I have to look at all of the the negativity that had been taken from my account. Oh, I may have yelled at like this, I may have said like that and, and again they take and they again make a spiritual marking, one, 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 one. And if they're concerned that night that their account is going to be negative, immediately give donation. Throw your account back into the positive. Everything you do of goodness, God rewards 10 points. Everything you do of bad, God takes one point. So the, the smart accounting whether we have for dunya because short people for dunya, they're really sharp on their accounting because they're monitoring everything. It's one thing to think you make a lot of money but every day you're losing everything. So then we have to be spiritually smart for our spiritual reality. And every night we take an account, a hisab and say, okay I need to do a few more good deeds before I go home tonight, I go out and give some food to people. I do something to make up for what I did wrong in my character and this becomes the value and the importance of a spiritual path. Then people don't have to ask, is a shaykh like this person, does he believe in this person? We believe in all of humanity because God created everything with love from the ant to the biggest of creation. And the most honoured and noble of creation is humanity and it's our responsibility to broadcast free, freely. So this teaching goes out to everyone. It's not bias onto one group of people and other people are not allowed to tune in, it's free. It's on all of these open platforms, all this social media is propagating in hundreds of thousands of posts. Last month alone was an increase of 80,000 subscribers with 22,000 shares on YouTube alone. So this is the hard work of people 
The ones whom volunteering and coming and thinking, okay my faith, I have to put my faith in action. If I benefited from this well, you know this world becomes like a desert of despair. The Sufi path and the reality of the shaykh has to be an oasis of love and kindness and respect. And when people feel that they came to that oasis, they felt that they quenched their thirst, they're obligated to serve. And the greatest service is to send the oasis to other people, send the teachings, propagate the links, send them onto social media profiles, make a profile for Muhammadan way or the Sufi path or the way of love, whatever clever name you want to make it. You take the reels, take the knowledges, take these teachings like an oasis and view to yourself that this world is like a desert of despair in which children and, and, and I believe to be many innocent people feel despair and anger and feel discouraged and they want to take themselves onto the street to make a change in which that's not going to be the change. The change has to come within ourselves. So when you spread that water and spread that relief it's a tremendous blessing, tremendous blessing. One for the one who will sleep at nights, I did my best my Lord to spread some goodness and love that is a, a balanced love, not bias, it's not uh, prejudice to one and, and, and cause despair to another. And as a result Allah to whom He guides inspires some, someone's heart to click on that post, hear it and say, that's exactly what I needed to hear for that day. That was like my medicine for the day. And, and this is, the, this is the, the works that keep us blessed to receive Divine grace and Divine beauty. That when Allah when God Almighty is pleased with the servant, He shines upon them and they become like a flower that being blessed within the radiance of His Divinely lights and as a result they release a fragrance towards humanity. That fragrance is enough to bring people back to the mercy of God Almighty and to the station of hope and energy. Now for our scientists online we bring something to their attention so that to propagate. In every field there must be a way in which to reach and assimilate Divine realities with the sciences of today. We talk much on computers and many people get confused but true computer people understood it. They understood the binary, they understood all of these Divine realities. Now for the medical and scientific field in this month of particle and wave that whatever God gives to us of a specialty, if He makes you to be somebody of a scientific nature and put for you to be on a spiritual path, you have a responsibility to assimilate your knowledges with your spiritual training. It's not the separation of state and religion. Our religion is the state. We don't separate our existences. We're here to make this state better by bringing enlightenment of the heavens, not keeping one hidden from the other. So it means that in every aspect these awliya must be inspiring within our lives on how to apply what we've learned towards the population in which we want to reach. Whether it's in our physical practices or in our professional lives and bring our spiritual training into our professional lives. So all of this particle and wave theory, quantum sciences which is the study of light. So when they talk of quantum sciences as is if somebody telling you this is the knowledges of Malakut. Quantum is the study of light. The teachers of Malakut, they're quantum teaching. They're teaching all of the haqqaiqs of this world of light and how scientists are trying to reach an understanding 
And if they're sincere, they should reach to an understanding, come to belief. If they're not sincere, they're understanding from these realities and weaponizing. And when they weaponize to bring down humanity because the marada, the shayateen and the bad spiritual beings, their desire is to destroy the energy of humanity and to enslave humanity. They're not interested in this creation to understand its true potential and as a result the power that it wields and yields. Means the power that humans can yield of their 70,000 or wield, I don't know the English for it is correct, but the power that they can manifest and the use of that power, negative forces are not interested in this understanding for humanity. So they're inspired by devils on how to bring about these knowledges and weaponizes. So what tonight then? is what we called Applied Neurosciences. Applied Neurosciences for all the scientific and professional science people, the medicine people, doctor people, with every specialty that you specialize in there must be a, a scientific spiritual field that exemplifies your teaching that will magnify your, your teaching based on the world of light. So this reality that even coming out of Harvard, Yale, MIT is applied neurosciences. What it then applied neurosciences as soon as you start to google what their program is about is as if the shaykh is talking to you. So this is exactly what the shaykhs are saying. The shaykhs of Malakut and the world of light when they talk to you that you are a, a, a light being but you're only operating at your particle existence which is your lowest ability. And what you should be operating at is your wave reality. So Applied Neurosciences is that the scientists came out and said, my goodness that people have a, a neuro field, a field of energy that their neurons, neuroreceptors and the, let the doctors explain that even more is they see that there's an entire energy field on humanity. And they understand the field is such a subtle field of energy that outside influences can affect the neurosystem, nervous system, energy system of people. Applied Neuroscience is how do you apply the neurosciences upon humanity? How is it applied through equipment and how do we apply it to each other? So what they understood? They understood that everything has an energy field and an effect. And we described today when we were talking that if our animators could show that in the room we sit, the energies and frequencies, if we colored every frequency with a different color. The frequency coming from the microwaves, we make one color. The frequency coming from the speakers, we make another color. The frequency coming from the outlets, another color. The frequency coming from the television, another color. Imagine all the different energy electrical devices within a home all of their frequencies everywhere. Neuroscience comes and says, well we're also an electrical being. Our neuroreceptors and our, and our systems in our body and other people can explain the physiology better, they studied that. How is it interacting with all these energy fields? And they came and described it's detrimental that we're such a sensitive energy being because the subtlety and Divine Grace upon our creation that everything in the room, Wi-Fi probably the most powerful in its destruction, nothing we can do this is the life we live, we give the solution at the end. That they found all these energies are affecting the neurosystems of humanity. 
And what happens is they understood that with all the negative frequencies, they can actually dial down somebody. And when they dial them down, means all of their neuroreceptors, everything about them begins to emanate at low frequencies. Hence depression, loss of energy, loss of will and desire to, to do. And this is exactly what the shaykhs and awliya have been teaching. The sciences are now catching up, so then the scientific tariqa students should be applying them, should be applying and understanding that our life is to raise the frequency. And they've studied that there are certain individuals whom their neurofrequencies resonate at very high levels. And they describe what is a phrase is that a person walked into the room and lit the room up. There are people like that in which their resonance and the amount of energy resonating from them is very strong. And as soon as you sit in their field of energy, they said scientifically they found that person has the ability to lift your frequency and they saw it scientifically. So that the accompanying of positive people brings about positive solutions and positive interaction. And they saw the same about people who resonate negative, that as soon as they enter into an environment they make everything to go negative. Even if the person is already at a negative charge they just go lower. And this is the character in which a person is negative in the face of all positivity. No matter what you tell the person of goodness they're going to still be negative. Our life is then to avoid negative people. Our life is to avoid the situation of negativity, to be conscious that negativity is extremely dangerous. So then scientifically when they're understanding that there's an energy field and the neurosystem of a human being means their entire electrical field has to be continuously modified continuously fixed and regulated and then continuously sanctified, sealed. And as a result the people whom resonate negative and go down, everything about their system becomes corrupted and down and they saw it. They saw that the effects on people on how you can raise somebody's frequency by being positive and how you can bring somebody's frequency down by being negative. So then how do we apply this in our lives is exactly how the shaykh is teaching. That when you come across a people to teach that you have to raise your frequency, you have to shield yourself from all negative frequencies and you have to have a chanting to bring your energy up. And if you look at the meditation book it's a very simple chant called Who? So when the shaykhs are giving these for a very simple introduction to people whom are working with people and trying to build people, heal people, to deal with their, their sicknesses, before you resolve a physical sickness there has to be a, a energy sickness has to be modified. It means that they have to come back into their resonance, they have to come back into positivity. As soon as they meet with somebody who represents positivity, they're, they're recharging the person, giving them back hope, giving them back a discipline that you have to breathe, you have to contemplate, you have to see yourself in a field of energy, you have to shield yourself to push away all negativity and chant who. And just keep who and visualize every type of positivity coming to you and every type of negativity being pushed away from you. These become the sciences that our people will apply towards people to teach them to go back to their energy realities. Then all the physical medicines and disciplines that people want to apply that's secondary. 
But the primary in its responsibility and its understanding is the wellness of people. That you cannot make people well until they change their energy field and bring their energy fields back up. And this is by their practices. So now this is just the basics but for those whom are practicing tariqahs and understandings if we contemplate and begin to meditate that they're teaching, they're weaponizing this. Why? Because this is the last days. Last days the battles are based on sound. So then if we know and they know, shaitan knows that if we weaponize their neural field we can bring them down, we can destroy them and they can self-destruct because the frequencies will come, people will hear, people will feel energies and they self-destruct. This is from a people whom don't believe within the heavens. Because if you search energy and you believe in heavens then that would lead you to Islam. So those whom I, I believe research and if they have a sincerity then they would come to Allah and say, yeah this is the Lord of the heavens and this is the source of power and energy. But what they don't believe is a, is, is a safety from Allah When they don't believe in the heavens then we understand the greatness of Prophet gave to us. So remember their philosophy is that with our energy devices we can enter into your neurosphere, your energy sphere and we can lower your energy because they believe your energy is from the energy all around. And if they manipulate the energy around they can enter into your field and lower it. Now what is the tariqah teaching? Is that we have a belief in Allah and we're not taking an energy field from the electromagnetic field because we're not doing yoga, we're not doing Buddhism, we're not doing Hinduism, we're doing a religion from the heavens and which is authorized from the Divine the Presence. The practices that Prophet brought was for an energy field. When Prophet is describing, now imagine their sciences and what we just described that continuously make wudu. Put from the power and the secret of water and the immense power oceans in water apply upon yourself. Why? Because immediately you're recharging your energy field. Pray two rakahs Salatul Wudu and now you've shielded your energy field. Not a shield from an energy that they can manipulate, you're shielding from a heavenly energy they have no access to. They don't know how to penetrate it <coughs> and they don't understand its source. <laughs> What they understand when they look at energies, they see the energy around and how you can manipulate into your aura and to your surroundings. But what they can't understand is a qudra coming from Allah That when the servant follows the way of Prophet what's happening to them? Immediately they wash burning away any type of negativity, they pray their wudu they have a shield of energy. Then they're being told by the shaykhs, it's connect, it's connect your, your heart. We just described that every device has an energy field in the room. The most powerful device is the human soul, call upon the shaykhs. As soon as you call upon the shaykhs, his neural field, his energy and his soul energy is present with you. And as a result of connecting with his neuro field because they found it direct, that soul is a person who comes and lights you up. That soul comes to be present with you, immediately recalibrate your entire neuro field, energy field. We use the words that they're using so that it'll be Googled in their search engines. 
and you're bringing a source that they're not understanding. They understood because they don't have belief. They understood that there are very positive people that if they walk into your presence, they immediately recharge all your energy. And scientific, so when people say, oh there's no benefit from other people, they, they're empty-minded people. The sciences are now showing, no there are people who come and immediately change the energy field of people. They don't know where that energy comes from, especially if they deal with religious people. It comes from a source that not privy to them. It's not coming from the electromagnetic field of this earth, it's coming from the heavens. So as soon as they connect, that's just another field of energy entered into the room but not from this world. And as soon as they connect with these souls, this entire biosphere of the person, the whole energy field of the person will be affected by that soul. And the shaykh will recharge all of the energy of the person and begin to provide a shield around the person. And that shield is a heavenly shield. So when they begin to make their devices to attack the energy field of humans, what happens to those whom been trained in their tafakkur and their muraqabah? Immediately they've been trained, go into your energy practices and bring that shield. That shield of energy comes, it's not from their dunya. They don't have access to destroy it, they don't have access to penetrate it. And this becomes an immense shield from negativity and that's exactly why shaitans and, and negative forces and every type of negative person tells you don't meditate, don't do tafakkur, don't do contemplation. So that why? So the weaponized energy can destroy you. And say weaponized, oh shaykh is saying something weaponized, your microwave is weaponized energy. Your blender in your house, your mobile phone, your ear pods, your television, every energy is inspired by negative energies to deplete us of our God-given right to energy and power from our soul. So means then the tafakkur, the contemplation, all of these realities are meant to energize us. Then imagine the sunnah of Prophet immense energy field. The ring from the sunnah of Prophet immense energy field. The sunnah and the asa from Prophet immense energy field. And the covering of the head like the capstone of the pyramid that if you're building an energy and one day may see this energy battle and that you provide a shield of energy and the energy is leaving from the skull of your head. As you're trying to defend yourself, just shooting out from your skull like a flowing fountain. And the capstone of your reality because Allah has a secret in everything and He wants us to adhere to the way of Prophet and the way of all the Prophets. As soon as you covered your head that energy is sealed and it's not leaving the body and as a result is resonating outward. That's why again those people whom inspired by shaitan say, it's not necessary to cover your head. No it's not if you want to be attacked and uh, be destroyed by these energy fields. But this energy science is coming more and more prevalent, more and more understood to bring certainty to believers. That whatever they're trying to understand Prophet already gave it to us. When we put ourselves into the sunnah, when women cover their head, they're shielding themselves from negativity. So how did the, the, the hadith describe that? That it would be like a fire on your head. And then people think, why a fire on your head? Well because it's an unseen fire. It's unseen enemies and, and difficulties coming and eating like the brain of people. Just like the men have the responsibility to shield themselves for these energies. And this becomes the immense science of these realities and these energies and, and applied neurosciences. And they have entire courses at MIT, I would imagine not so much for spirituality but because they want to weaponize the science of energy.
but it brings for the servants of the Divine a yaqeen, look they're saying these are the dalils that they understood. Now understand the greatness when Allah says, I guide you and the guidance of Prophet what a guidance. They gave us all of these abilities to defend ourselves from energies. We pray that Allah <coughs> give us a deeper understanding and that people go back and look to applied sciences. For every degree you have there must be a spiritual teaching. So oncologists when they're, they're dealing with cancer it's not what you think it is, it's not that. It has to do with parasites and attacks within the cellular level of people. There has to be a spiritual study in which you study and apply to your specialties. It's not just believing their sciences, their sciences are not correct, they're not based on the belief of Allah But you take the cleverness of what you learned and you apply from the spiritual understanding. That's what we gave in the under and the discussions of other things. When somebody says they're cancerous, they have sicknesses, they have all of these things, look these are the attacks of jinn. Just because you see the pathogen doesn't mean it's not a jinn. Go back 500 years there was no microscopes. All of this was described by Prophet these are unseen energy forces, these are unseen energy creations. Now that you have a microscope, mashallah you became so smart, you named it something and said something that it's not, it's not a jinn, it's a pathogen. And Allah even wrote your language so that He would put a clue in it, the path of a jinn. So just because you see it, no, it's still from the jinn realities. These are energies, parasites, uh, bacterias, all that are entering to bring the energy of people down. So then many of the cures for people are based on that understanding, how to destroy the parasite, how to stop something from its parasitical nature of feeding off of us. They and their race that interfere with humanity are parasites, they feed off of the energy of ihsan and sun to destroy them, to manipulate them and to take from them as an energy source. We pray that Allah give us a greater understanding and the understanding of energies and lights and the realities of, of these especially as we enter into the last days where many of the battles will be based on energy. Those whom have it, alhamdulillah, those whom need it will be seeking it out inshaAllah. Bi hurmati Muhammad al-Mustafa, bi siri Surat al-Fatiha. As Salaamu Alaykum wa Rahmatullahi wa Barakatuh. This is Shaykh Najjan, thank you for watching the video that you're watching. InshaAllah if you're happy with the content and happy with these programs, please support the button below the programs that we have for our orphanage repairs, our water well, give the gift of life, our mobile food vans. We have now five vans, Vancouver, Chicago, Los Angeles, Pakistan. There's many programs that reach thousands of people and rescue foods and give those supplies to people in need. Your support is greatly appreciated. Also, be so kind as to leave uh, loving comments and please share the stream, every bit counts. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh.